What's up baby mamas and baby daddies? Welcome back to my channel, She Really Had a Baby, where I'm reclaiming and redefining all things baby mama. It's been quite a crazy year with the coronavirus and the pandemic and a way that it changed things significantly for me as a mom, more importantly a single mother, was having to homeschool my child. Now when coronavirus first started off, Nyla was still going to public school. She was in kindergarten and things got a little bit different when they took a break and we started doing something called distant learning. Nyla school called and said that tomorrow they're sending home work just in case they can't come back to school Monday. So it's a real thing. Like LAUSD is about to shut down. Everything was virtual, online, Zoom classes every day. It was towards the end of the year, so we didn't have to do that for very long, but it was very stressful. I felt like I was being assigned assignments and told what to do. I very quickly went from teaching my daughter how to write to teaching my daughter how to type. Highlight the coordinating conjunction in the sentence guess we're failing out of kindergarten over here. And make sure that she's using things like caps lock when she's submitting her daily journal entries for her teacher. And while I know that educators were doing the very best that they could to accommodate the students in a way that none of us would have ever expected that they had to, it just wasn't for me. Even as someone that's in a fortunate position to be working full time from home, it was a very stressful situation to go from having almost LAUSD as a babysitter slash educator where I dropped my law off and I knew for five to six hours a day that I was gonna have the time to get work done whether that be for my brand in business or just housework. Then we found ourselves in the middle of a pandemic where anxiety was heightened especially with me and Nyla. As you know if you followed our story for a while we were living in a very very small studio slash bachelor apartment and we were quarantined there. It was definitely not the most comfortable situation for either one of us. We were both because incredibly frustrated with one another as far as personal space things to do and then like I said just the overall anxiety of the pandemic and it trying to explain coronavirus to a five-year-old hey yeah uh, this is for the coronavirus so if you're not the coronavirus virus just keep scrolling okay When summer break finally came, Nyla graduated kindergarten on Zoom. Time progressed and it seemed more and more like this coronavirus thing was not going away. Once I realized that it was still gonna be distance learning, I knew that there was something that I had to do and I had to make a change. So I used it as an opportunity to start doing my research and I decided to fully homeschool my child. For all of my awesome IG followers that are subscribed to me here on YouTube, I see you, I appreciate you showing love on all the platforms, y'all. What I did was on my Instagram stories, I asked if you guys had a couple of questions for this video specifically. Seth Liv said, how do you teach history? So the Time for Learning curriculum has a section called Social Studies. You watch different videos that cover history and then I supplement with my own thoughts and opinions and things that we learn in this house. Homeschooling 101. The only Christopher we unlock is Wallace. Who's that? Peggy. Period. <laughs> Christopher Columbus didn't discover shit. That's one of my favorite parts about homeschool is that you get to talk about racism and talk about how um, some of the things that are taught in standard history books and lessons kind of are not 100% true. Someone said, what program do you use? How many hours a day do you do? And how do you determine proficiency? And this person's name is 0628926MV. That is a, is a username, girl. You do amazing reporting the good and bad days. You're an inspiration. So first of all, thank you. I think that transparency is super important. On my Instagram, I've shared, just like she said, the days that have been pretty bad. If one out of four isn't, isn't red, then how many bowling balls are red? What's the fraction? Three. Three is not even an answer but also the successes that we have. Yeah, You're doing blue. a great job, I want okay? Red is my favorite color. I would like a red balloon too. These balloons. I got three wrong. That's okay. That's okay, that ain't no, that ain't no problem. That ain't no problem. 
We have a reward system where every 10 stickers she gets to pick from something, a treasure chest, and the treasure chest just has this assortment of all these different prizes, which I also got on Amazon and I'll make sure link below, where when she does well and she gets 10 stickers, she gets to go in there and pick a prize out and it just makes her happy. They're really cheap little one-off things, but it keeps her encouraged and it keeps her checked in with trying to do her best. I didn't necessarily want to have to teach everything myself. What I really like about the Time for Learning curriculum is there's two sides. There's the student portal and then the parent portal. In the parent portal, you're literally able to, to plan out the dates that you want for the school year, when you want the school year to begin and end. And once you do that, it automatically sorts all of the different subjects for curriculum into individual weeks throughout the entire year. So every day when Nyla logs into her portal for that week, we already see all of the modules that she needs to check off to be on track to finish first grade on time at the end of the year, which I put for the end of June, because usually in Los Angeles, that's when the school year ends. There's worksheets that you can print out to physically practice the different things that are being taught in the curriculum. Wait, is there no more paper? There's different practice modules within the curriculum itself, as well as quizzes. This is easy. You can set a certain standard for a quiz. If Nyla doesn't get at least 80% on an assignment, the system automatically marks it as needing to be redone, so I know that it's an area that we need to watch the curriculum again, research it maybe a little bit myself to refresh my memory, because y'all, even with a first grade curriculum, there's some stuff that I had to refresh my mind. It does cost $19.99 a month. Homeschooling is not something that's free. I am currently looking more into how to get funding or grants or scholarships. I'm not sure how that all applies. I feel very blessed to have been able to take care of a lot of things on my own, but there are a lot of out-of-pocket expenses with making sure that your child has all of the things that they need to learn and have fun doing it and be hands-on with it. How many hours a day do you do it? We have like an about an hour on reading and language arts, <sighs> maybe like another 30 minutes. To 45 minutes on math and social studies and science could probably be like another hour around 30 minutes each so no more than three or four hours a day homeschool doesn't have to be an all-day thing it is something that you can just get straight to the point I know people that even homeschool for only about two hours a day the three to four hours I'm usually just dragging some stuff out so that I can just get my own work done I have her do about 20 to 30 minutes of reading every day and with the reading what I do is she has a notebook where if she comes across a word in a book that she either doesn't know the meaning of or cannot pronounce I have her write it down in that book and then at the end of the reading session I'll go through tell her what the word means and tell her how to say the word and then we'll practice that word a couple of times just so that while she's reading I'm not constantly being interrupted with mom what's this word mom what's that the whole point is to get some type of independent study happening so that notebook has been a lifesaver as far as not interrupting me another thing that really helps with interruption which I've noticed helps Nyla stay focused as well is a timer so I have this timer it'll also be in the description box it's a game changer what I do is every time we start a section I'll put the minutes that she's supposed to do it for and it counts down so I know that once that timer starts I have 30 minutes to get whatever emails work editing something that I'm doing done where Nyla's not going to interrupt for me because I've set the boundary that she knows not to talk to me until the timer goes off basically and then it kind of helps her because she'll look up and she'll be like oh I still have 15 minutes let me keep focused let me keep working and we do the same thing as far as breaks too if I'm like okay you can have a 30 minute break to play in your room then I'll use the timer as well for the most part I'm not gonna lie Nyla is really killing it as far as um, language arts and spelling and reading it's something that's coming very very natural to her I will say that we are y'all we are struggling with math okay we are definitely struggling with math over here I think that I went into the time for learning really hoping that I wasn't gonna have to do anything at all because like I said guys I'm not an expert homeschooler I get frustrated I get overwhelmed I'm not a teacher I've found a whole new appreciation for teachers and and what they do even with the lack of, of patience that I have and not being a professional I'm watching Nyla grow in ways that I never could have imagined her developing in the public school system so even as the coronavirus <sighs> I want to say go is going away but it's, it's really not the cases are actually spiking 
So I wouldn't be surprised if the private schools and things that were open actually started shutting down again. I can't imagine that I'm putting Nyla back in, especially with this whole setup that I got. I basically turned my dining room into a makeshift homeschool thing. And that's because when Nyla sits down, I want Nyla to come out and know it's time to work. I mean business. And I want her to feel comfortable and look around and see a learning environment. So all of the posters that I have on the wall are all representative of things that kind of help her. For instance, something that she uses all the time that I highly recommend is the number chart. It's one through 100, whether it's learning how to add, subtract, or even counting by ones, twos, fives, and tens. That's a chart that Nyla references all the time. I think that repetitive, repetitively, it has helped her understand concepts. So that's something I'm glad that I have up there. I have a world map on the wall. That's helped a lot with social studies because there's curriculums that go over the different continents and the different seas. It's just something she can look up and reference. In the description box, I'm gonna list all of the different things that I have in my homeschool setup for you guys to kind of go through and decide and see if there's stuff that you would want to purchase for yourself. Finding what works best for your child I really feel like is what homeschooling is all about. Another big thing that's been helping with math a lot has been these um, blocks that we got. They're different color blocks and they can be used for two different subjects. We can use them for math because she can physically count out the different blocks, individual ones, for adding and subtracting and understanding concepts, but also for comparing and contrasting matter and mass when we're doing science projects and using a balancing scale. I probably spent probably about 150 to $200 just purchasing all the different random things that they suggested. And Nyla can watch videos and I can write stuff on the board all day, but when she physically sees something, that's usually when it clicks for her. And that makes sense because I'm also a visual learner myself. I was also never like a mathematician myself. My strong suit was always reading and writing. And it looks like Nyla's on par with that as well. Like her mommy, <laughs> and I'm doing fine, so we're gonna be okay. We do art related things, so I'll sit down with Nyla and we'll watch a YouTube video about drawing a frog together and we'll draw a frog together or I'll give her outside time play where I let her go outside on the patio and play with slime or play with kinetic sand. We have a folder that I've created just making sure that I have a bunch of <sighs> proof that I don't know if there's a time of year that I'm supposed to submit something or if just the LA County School police can just show up and just be like, show me your folder and let us know that you really teaching this kid something. I don't, like I said, I don't really know anything. If you're still watching this video, I don't even know why. Have I even helped you? Like, if I've helped you, hit a like and subscribe and comment.